beautiful Daytona Beach, Florida, home of the NAIA National Championship. We're at Municipal Stadium where the sun has set and we're ready for the main event. The St. Francis Cougars out of Indiana are here to take on the Baker Wildcats representing Kansas. 24 tackles for loss coming in here tonight. Second down and three. Brown's been a workhorse on this first drive and that's the first time the Cougars have been able to slow him down as Lucas Sparks was in position. Try and run it again. And this opens up a hole to the 30, the 20. Jason Nicodemus is inside the five. First and goal, Cougars. And this is what happens when you get everybody inside the box to try and stop the short yardage run. There's nobody at the second level. You see Nicodemus get through the scene. There's nobody there. You've got defensive backs coming from the other side of the field trying to make the tackle. Nicodemus is a no frills downhill runner. When he gets it, there's no dancing. He's going north and south. And now the Cougars will try and spread him out one more time. Keep an eye, Seth Cove, bottom of your screen. This is his territory. They look his way and say, go get it. Touchdown, St. Francis. the matchup that they wanted, A.B. Parker, teams pick on him because of his size. At five foot nine, there's a distinct height advantage. That's a six inch height advantage. So all Ferrer did was throw the football up, allow Colt to make a play on it. And you see Colt is able to high point the football. A.B. Parker never had an opportunity to make a play on that football. Bertel, with time, but the pocket closes quickly. And call that the first sack of the game. That's Eric Hemelgarn, the big sophomore. And when you watch Hemelgarn on film, he has great burst as a penetrator. He bursts off the line of scrimmage, so the guards, they have to be ready and prepared. And they have to be stout at the point. So third down for the Cougars. Ferrer looks to his left and dumps it off to a wide open Nicodemus. And how about Jason Nicodemus early on in this game, establishing himself as a factor? Well, Nicodemus is the third and fourth down, short yardage back. And what he did on that play, he got to the outside in the flat. Nobody went with him. Good job by Ferrer reading where the pressure was coming from and dumping the ball off to Nicodemus. Nicodemus came in with only 23 catches on the year. Had a great time talking to Coat last week. Such an intelligent player for St. Francis. Third down and long though. Gegner in motion, and now they'll fire it once more. A first down catch made at the 40 yard line. That's McDowell, the senior out of Indianapolis. And number 87, Zach Gegner got everyone's attention. He can be behind the formation and up the sideline. Everyone paid attention to him. Nobody paid attention to the other receiver in the scene. McDowell, he's able to get the first down. here in Daytona and now a championship atmosphere at Municipal Stadium. It's a 44-yard field goal try by Ryan Nix and it's good. And although St. Francis scored on that play, Baker did a good job of not allowing them to extend that drive where it looked like the defense was on their heels. Everybody was gassed. That was about a 13-14 play drive. Good job by the defense to hold. How about Ryan Nix? He continues to be a great story for St. Francis. You now, Mr. Nix in the off season was riding his bike and was hit by a car, wound up on the hood of that car and wound up okay. Came out with hardly a scratch. He's a tough guy, he's a football player. That's what makes him so effective. Rattel to throw, he's in trouble and he's going down. Second sack of the game for the Cougars. And again, right there, it's the big man, Hemelgarn. And Hemelgarn is a very powerful pass rusher. He is a bull rusher. He runs right up. You see him right here, right in the middle of the offensive line. He just runs through the offensive lineman, the center. Newt Holden had no chance at 5'10". He's not that tall. He's got to get up under him. The ATM's automatic touchdown machines. All of his wide receivers and running backs. 
Here's Logan Bertel, the player of the year. Goes short with it, and Clarence Clark is going to be eaten up. The Cougars have that play to perfection. Spencer Coward was right there waiting for him. Also, Harnish, the linebacker. And that's what you want to do to ball carriers when they come across the middle. Punish them when they get possession of the football. Make them think about it. So when the ball comes their way again, they're looking around to see where the hit is coming from, and they get those alligators. St. Francis defenders are going to play off the receiver. It's the receiver's job to make a play when they get the football. Give it to Brown, but he is going to be cut down. Spencer Coward, the junior linebacker from Fort Wayne, denied. And Coward did a good job of fighting through the blocker. They were trying to block him on the outside. You see him knock the blocker off. Good job by Coward. But they tried to today. get a block on Who's holding this 5'10, 260 pounds? It's difficult when you've got a 6'5 guy running through you. They've got a double team. Here it comes again, and it's a turnover. Lucas Sparks is on the football, and St. Francis has got it back. That is why they can't go down the field. They're getting pressure from the outside, pressure from up the middle. Logan Patel cannot step up in the pocket. And when you watch the offensive tackles, they're giving up a short edge. You see right here to the outside, you cannot turn those shoulders. You've got to kick back three steps to keep the width of the pocket. The tackles are opening up those shoulders, reaching out for these quick defensive linemen. Here's Nick Ferrer. Defense makes the big play. And now the offense hopes to reward them here. Justin Green up the middle, and there he goes. Green is going to score. Touchdown, St. Francis. And throughout the evening, you've seen Green on the cusp of breaking one on the cusp, on the cusp, and finally, he gets to the second and third level defenders, and you cannot arm tackle him. The deceptive speed, once again, you see his silkiness, the smoothness, the balance, the quickness, the ability to elude tacklers, and when he gets to the open field, you're not gonna tackle him. Justin Green has been a smooth operator Purchase here in the first half. My kid, my kid. Here's Brutel again. And his receivers right now are just getting decked. That's Spencer Coward again, the second big hit he's had in his first half. And this is exactly what you want to do when a receiver comes across the middle. You got to make him pay for it. Timeout, Baker. This will be a 30 second timeout. This is a hard hitting secondary for the Cougars tonight, and they have teed off on Cornell Brown and company. And once again, it's a clean play. Purchase shoulder pad, shoulder pad. This is a full timeout. Full timeout by Baker. Good job by the St. Francis player, not the convention of Visitors Bureau, and that's just it. We've tried to make this a bowl experience for the guys. Of course, 83 degree weather today didn't hurt, but they got a chance to go to Daytona Motor Speedway, an icon in the sports world. Kids got to be down in Pit Road, and uh, a special tradition here in Daytona Beach. Folks lit up during the Christmas holiday season. Nothing Logan Bertel would like more than to get this Wildcats offense moving as he misfires that time. Again, tight defense intended for Nolan. But there's number 30 there to break it up. That's Spencer Coward. He's been active tonight. And Bertel wanted to go down the field to Lede Bruce, but he was double covered. And a good job by Spencer Coward getting his hand in and knocking the ball down. But St. Francis is doing a good job. Of, you know what's been common throughout this evening is when Green runs the football, he falls forward. He's one of those ham and eggers. You know, he's always falling forward. Even when it looks like he's stopped in the backfield, he's going to get you a yard or two because he's going to fall forward and put the ball out. Sophomore out of Griffith, Indiana. He is emerging as a superstar in this St. Francis program. Here's a little flip, and that's Sean Boswell. First down yardage and more to the 26-yard line. That's a completion, and that's a quarterback's favorite play. And that was a great job at the point of attack by number 87, Zach Gegner. Watch the block right here. The block right here, that opens up the hole and allows Boswell to get those positive yards. Once again, you got to do your 111 
on offense and on defense, do your job, and you'll allow the play to be positive. Quarterback career, you got to stay on top of coach. Cougars now methodically moving it. Play action to Green and stepping up. A wide open guy at the 20. It's Coat. Stiff arm and he scores. Touchdown, St. Francis. And that's that stiff arm too I talked about in the open. He's such a strong receiver when he gets the ball in his possession. He can break tackles. He can make the difficult catch. An easy catch for him. Nick Ferrer did a good job of putting the ball where he can make today. the easy catch. And watch the stiff arm right here. He sticks it out and just pushes Avery Parker away. I don't know how you allow Coke to get this open. I don't care what kind of ball fakes they're doing. You've got to stay on top of Coach. You've got to stay with him every single play. So Seth Coat, his second touchdown catch of the night. And momentum back to the Cougars' side. Nix's extra point is good. It's 24 to 10. St. Francis answers the Baker score. And you see the play action right here. Everyone goes for it. You see the linebackers get sucked in. And right there, number 21, Darian Winston, the best defensive back in coverage for Baker, falls down. That's what happened. I knew it had to be a reason that Seth Cope was as wide open as he was. Darian Winston, number 21, lost his footing and fell down. And Seth Cope did exactly what you're supposed to do. Keep running. And Nick Ferrer did a good job of knowing where his receiver was and finding him down the field. And Nick Ferrer keeps that streak going of two touchdown passes in every game. Such a streak by both of these guys. And you see this big play offense, they're able to strike at any moment. Big smile for Seth Cote on the sideline. Also credit offensive coordinator Patrick Donnelly and Trevor Miller. Strength is pushing the center back into his face. Now here comes three-man rush. Bertel will step up, has a man, incomplete. Well defended by Jarrell Holman. As Quincy Johnson went airborne, but Holman was just too much. Bertel did a good job of putting the ball where his receiver could make a play on it, but Holman did a better job of playing the football and knocking it down at the last minute. But Dave Boos had an opportunity, but you see Holman get in there and knock the ball down right at the last minute. The receivers on the field for the Cougars. Nick Ferrer with time again. Lofts it in the air. Code is down there and makes a great catch. He is down at the 35-yard line. Darian Winston saved a touchdown. And once again, you allow the big play receiver to get man coverage on the outside. He beats the bump, and then you've got safety help over the top in the zone, in the deep end of the defense, but they allow Coke to run by them. You cannot allow Coke to get to the outside and get behind you or on top of you as a defensive player. He is too dangerous when the ball is in the air. All right, right now, Seth Code has taken over this football game. Two huge catches on the last few series. Take it to Green. Ferrer going for the jugular. It's Code for the score. was game plan. They put Coke at the tight end position. He released right when the ball was snapped. I watched him the whole play. He did a corner post route. He acted like he was going to the corner route and went to the post and had man coverage. He had a safety on him. It's an easy pitch and catch. You're watching one of the best pass catchers in NAIA football, Seth Coke, do his thing here in Daytona and they got the coverage that they wanted. They put him at tight end, and he's able to get a running start. He did not get bumped off the line of scrimmage. Easy pitch and catch. Nick Ferrer knew where he wanted to go with the football the entire time. Forrest, they got the coverage they wanted, but right now, whatever coverage, <laughs> this guy <laughs> is on a roll. He is oh, feeling it. Ferrer finds Seth Coat. Cougars blowing this one open.
How about Seth Coat taking over this game? Right now he's got nine catches for 180 yards for St. Francis. This was the latest. And Seth Coat has got what I call those butterfinger, a, a, a buttery, soft butter fingertips. Not butterfinger, but soft buttery because once he gets it, it's smooth. He catches it, he squeezes it, and he gets the easy score. Right now, he is taking over this ball game. They can't stop him, and I don't understand the challenge of being those guys to knock those guys off. Here's Bertel, play action, comes back to the other side. Clark gonna be stuck. Just not a lot of yards for catch tonight. These guys in the secondary for St. Francis have just played fabulous, making sure those catches have been kept to minimal gains. And that's what you want to do. You want to punish the ball carrier. Every opportunity you get, Clarence Clark gets possession of the football, you want to punish him. Crowd comes alive on the St. Francis side. They throw it backwards. Tough play for Brown to make. And the ball came out as he took a shot. And this should be St. Francis ball as Wilmer Cole falls on it. It is Cougar football. And you talked about it, Drew. Trying to get the extra yards, make the extra play. You've got to hold the ball high and tight. Watch Brown on this play. Right as he's going Brown down, the, field is the ball is hit and jarred loose by number 31, Marcus Stepp. The player that stepped in the play before to knock the ball down. Comes across him with the big hit. Puts his helmet right on the football. Good job by the St. Francis defense continuing to go for that ball and get the big play, which might be the play that closes out this championship ball game. Marcus Stepp right there, the sophomore out of Fort Wayne. Also, Wilmer Cole, he came up with it. Still has the one touchdown pass to Nolan, but has been contained by this Cougar defense. Here's a quick slant. Johnson's going to pay for it like his fellow receivers have so many times tonight. As Spencer Coward has just been awesome in the secondary. And you see Spencer Coward break on the football. As soon as the receiver runs his comeback route and turns around to go towards the ball, John. Under three minutes now. Ferrer turns around, gives it off, and it's another big run. Off to the races and into the end zone. Touchdown Cougars, P.J. Dean busting through. And that's the icing on the cake for Kevin Donnelly. And you see the Baker players coming up to stop a run when you have everyone in the box. If the back is able to get up to the second and third level, there's only one or two defenders to beat. You see him make the cut, P.J. Dean, and it's easy sailing to the end zone. Coach Donald is such a cool cat. You see a little bit of emotion. Even when you get positive yards, we're going to make you feel us as a defense. Wrapped up and sacked. That's Marcus Stepp, the sophomore out of Fort Wayne. And coming unblocked, Step did a good job. Victory ride for the legend, Kevin Donnelly. All right, guys, congratulations, Coach Donnelly, and all of the St. Francis Cougars on your very first national championship with the NAIA. To present your trophy, here is Kelly Briscoe, manager of football championship. Coach Donnelly and the rest of the St. Francis family, congratulations on behalf of the NAIA and your first ever football national championship. side well earned from St. Francis. Of course, this started from scratch in 1998. Coach Donnelly has been there every step of the way, and tonight, they're the best in NAIA. This is the culmination of hard work and dedication by the players, by the coaching staff, by the coaches' wives who bought in and allowed their husbands to stay those extra hours and prep and plan and put themselves in the position to 
celebrate like they're doing this evening. That's off to the Cougars of St. Francis tonight on top of the mountain of what is NAIA football. What a night here in Daytona Beach.